Hey, do you have an old Ford Motor Company motor vehicle built from about the 50s through the 80s? Then you're probably familiar with these old analog gauges that don't really tell you a whole lot. Specifically the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge and even your oil pressure warning light if that's all you have. They're a little bit iffy in the best of times and the thing with these gauges is they just give you a range like from low to high fuel or cold to hot temperature. So they were never really meant to be precise instruments. They're really just meant to give you a warning of impending doom so you can pull off to the side of the road. <laughs> but you at least want to know that they're in their correct operating range. If they're having issues, it's hard to isolate what the problem is because there's several different variables. You have the gauge itself that could be out of calibration. You have the sending unit that's giving it the signal. You have the instrument voltage regulator on the back of the gauge cluster and you just have old wiring as well. Um, so there hasn't really been a good way to figure that out until now. Check out this nifty GT Ford One gauge tester from Desert Classic Parts. You can pick one of these up at West Coast Classic Cougar and we're gonna walk through how to use it and I'm gonna try it out because I'm actually curious if my temperature gauge is accurate. The first test we want to do is to hook this thing up to anything to test the power of the instrument voltage regulator. There's a little power indicator on this so it should light up. If you still have your factory electromechanical instrument voltage regulator, <laughs> I'm going to say IVR from now on. If you still have your factory electromechanical IVR, this should pulse. You should have this power light flashing off and on because that's how the original one works. If you've replaced it with a solid state one, which I have, um, it should just light up steady. And this is supplying five volts to the gauges or thereabouts. And so if that's not working, you could have all of your gauges reading low or high, or they could just not work. So step one, let's check the power. Okay, we're under the hood now, and to start the power test, I'm just going to unplug the temperature sender wire here. And I'm going to take my little tester mobob, set it to the power test mode, and hook up the red side or positive to the sender wire itself, and then the black to a ground somewhere. There's enough wire here that I could bring it over to the battery negative. And then we're just going to switch the car on to the accessory or run position. I probably recommend accessory, especially if you have an electronic ignition. Okay, we have a steady blue light, so that's a good sign. Looks like our instrument voltage regulator works. So that's good to know because you would not want to take your whole dash apart to replace that, especially if you don't need to. Okay, so I'm going to move it into the high position and we're still hooked up to the wire for the temperature sending unit. So this should send my temperature gauge all the way to the top. So it can take a couple minutes. Let's go inside the car and take a look. All right, it's been a couple minutes and that's as high as she's going. So it doesn't actually go all the way up to the H. That's very interesting. That's just as high as it goes. So now I know that. And that's supposed to be the most accurate side of the scale. Well, let's try the medium setting. Okay, that's had a little time to sit, and look at that, it's bang on in the middle. That's a perfect neutral reading. And this tells me that my sending unit, which is an aftermarket one, reads a little bit high, because when I'm driving around and I'm up to normal operating temperature, this is actually up there in the high range when I know the car is actually not running hot, it's actually normal. So not a big surprise there. Those aftermarket temperature senders are known to read a bit high. But let's try the low setting. Okay, I've let that sit for a bit and now it's right down below the C. So that's interesting. It looks like my gauge is a little bit shifted towards the negative side, meaning all the way high doesn't go all the way to high, but all the way low goes below low, if that makes sense. So from that test we can confirm that my gauge is actually out of calibration. So I wish I would have known that when I was putting the car together and still had the whole gauge cluster out on the bench. 
Um, but you can use this tester if you have your gauges out and you have a 12 volt power supply. Now don't hook up the 12 volt straight to the gauge, you need to hook it up to the IVR so it can feed the gauge its correct voltage. Uh, and there are little adjustments on the back of these gauges that you can try if you're a do-it-yourselfer to adjust the calibration. But you can also send it to Rocketman, who is a expert in gauges for old Ford and Mercury's, especially Cougars and Mustangs. And for about 15 bucks, he can calibrate your gauge for you. Or if you're dealing with a 67 to 73 Mercury Cougar, you can get a good verified tested gauge from West Coast Classic Cougar. But in my case, I don't want to take it all apart again, but it's good to know that it's a little bit off so I can kind of compensate in my mind when I'm looking at it. Handy tool. So just a fun little side story that relates. This 68 Mercury Cougar was bought brand new by my grandparents back in 68. And I recently moved back to my hometown and this is actually where they used to live. And my family still owns the place. So I was looking around in the basement and came across this. Original temperature sending unit, auto light, out of this car. And uh, it kind of tells you that they were having issues with the temperature gauge. And my grandpa at some point had installed a, what is it, Stuart Warner temperature gauge that actually tells you what the temperature is, bolted to the underside of the dash. And I thought about leaving it in there when I restored the car, but it didn't look that great, so I did end up taking it out. But these are interesting little clues, and it's cool to find this little piece of original hardware out of the car. Okay, it's basically the same if you want to check your fuel gauge. Take the wire off the sending unit, attach the red alligator clip to the wire that feeds the gauge, if you can. Okay. And then the black wire to a ground. I think I have a screw up here I can use. That should work. And now, I'm just take this, put it in the high position. I'm going to go turn the key to accessory again, and we're going to see what my fuel gauge looks like. There you go. That gauge is spot on. Perfectly on the full. That's great. Everything's working. So what that means is if I go and fill my car up to the brim with gas and this doesn't read all the way on the F, then I know my float level is a little bit wrong or my sending unit is a little bit off. That's pretty handy. Well, I think you basically get the idea. It comes with some great written instructions that go into more detail about how to test everything and if certain conditions exist, it'll tell you what the likely culprit is. So it really saves you a lot of time and energy trying to chase down these gauge issues. So definitely a good value. I recommend it. I think every old Ford owner should have one in the toolbox. And thanks to Desert Classic Parts for sending me this to test. And you can get yours at West Coast Classic Cougar. Thanks for watching.